Hello and welcome back to another series of The Hard West. Today we're going to look at the last chapter on Earth as it is in Hell. We know that the father of Warren, um, his name was, well, The Undertaker, let's call him that. I forgot his name, unfortunately. Well, anyways, he is now trying to help his son Warren, so I'm looking for a re- United uh, stand against the devil. We're playing it on the hardest difficulty. Combat injuries, Iron Man, and let's go. All wasn't lost yet. If purgatory could be destroyed, Florence would be set free. There was just one catch. Only the dead can enter purgatory. So to fulfill his plan and upset the order of nature, he needed you half living, half dead, to do his dirty work. You'd only get one shot at this. To make sure you didn't fail, you set out to find a cadre of legendary gunmen to put together the ultimate posse. Meanwhile, the Undertaker, still searching for some measure of redemption, struck a blow against the evil forces massing against humankind. The enemies that remained came together to end him once and for all. Chased, wounded, and trapped in an abandoned fort, he awaited their final offensive. Ooh. <coughs> it starts great. The battlefield echoed with rallying cries of your father's enemies. I'm always wondering why exactly... Here's the deal. Why is it that we end this session with almost all of the cards, great weapons, and a lot of motivation, and then I start a session, and basically we have the worst possible... Um, the worst possible stuff. Well, that is very, very unfortunate. So, we probably can go for dodge here. I like the idea. We don't have enough for chain kill. I mean, we could equalize and chain kill everyone but i don't know how many guys are going to be there i like the idea like of equalization and that would mean everyone's reduced one hp it's a lot of damage and with chain kill so we could then eat the mandrake root uh, basically chain kill and kill everyone um let me think about that Well, here's the thing, we don't know how, how much luck they do have. On paper, that looks great, because we could kill everyone. In reality, it would we would need to actually kill all of these targets at once. Hmm. Hmm. Alright, let's... Wait a second, I don't know... If equalize... Equalize takes two action points. So, forget what I was saying. It wouldn't work. But we could still kill this guy over there. See? Too much luck. Okay. I mean, we still got the chain kill for a little bit later when we need hit points. Hmm. 
So far we're okay. One of these guys shouldn't be able to hit us. We're just killing the little um, cultists first. This will be the first round where we don't have dodge, <clears throat> so I'm assuming we're, we're going to lose some luck. Yeah, there we go. Probably two shots. Alright, let's go for another dodge. Putting ourselves into a uh, into a position where we are effectively being covered from both sides. Yeah, as long as we do have cover, dodge allows us to only take, uh, to, to dodge effectively all of the shots. I don't know if I'm missing one of the main points here, but so far it seems like we're just defending ourselves against like this massive onslaught. Still got another round of dodge left, <clears throat> so let's reload. This devil could be an issue. I'm not going to move. I could normally move now that dodge is gone, but since we need new do uh, new luck in order to fill up dodge, what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to start uh, fan firing at this guy. <laughs> yeah, I probably should have moved into full cover to take less damage, but that's fine for now. Again, let's dodge. This guy is slowly but surely regenerating, I think. And we can't really kill him in full cover. It'll take a long time to get him down. Problem is we we need to somewhat be swift and don't wait for too long. So moving out of range. Reloading. We're a bit out of luck. <clears throat> the longer we wait, the more the demon will regenerate. Yeah, there, we, we have already seen that the demon just regenerated.
eating the mandrake root, filling up, uh, filling up our luck, and let's reload our weapon as well. So yeah, it's going to regenerate yet again. I hope by killing it, it's not going to transfer its body to the next uh, to the next victim. Interestingly enough, we haven't found any target, so probably that guy actually moved down there. Moving over. Interesting, we haven't found a single target. Well, that, that explains where all of these targets are. But 7 hit points is a bit too much for my taste, so see you later guys. I need a different angle to approach these guys. So they apparently all moved into the house. Time for us to reload. I'm not sure if we can actually get all of them at the same time. Maybe we can use dodge. It's maybe not the best, not the worst idea. Like this here is a solid cover position because it uh, gives you cover from both sides. Yeah, let's try that. All right, everyone uh, is jinxed and loses some uh, some luck. We're just going to dodge. And let's start to take them out. They will continue to lose even more luck. Five luck short of chain killing, but that's okay. So the question is, do we want to stay here and take shots next turn? Or we want to play it safe. Um, moving up might mean that we're taking a shot from this guy. Which I think we're just going to play it uh, to just stay here for now. Going to take one shot max. Not even that. So let's continue activating our dodge. Well, you know what? Let's not do that. Not this turn.
Moving into safe cover. Yep, that's one shot. That's okay. Do not dare shooting at us. Perfect. We're going to dodge. Using up all of our luck. Okay, here we go. Let's continue. Well, I already know that we can't kill him in one go. Might as well take the shot while we're then in full cover. And then move down. Of course, he could also decide to not shoot us at all and just continue to move like a retard. That is very much possible. The demon was reborn in a flash of burning brimstone. But there was a way to sever its connection to this world. There we go, 70 luck. That's good enough for me. Let's get the dodge going. Very good. Let's see. Demon is almost down. And one HP at least. Later on, your father questioned a survivor to suss out your location. He revealed where you were headed. Your father, the Undertaker, would confront you there. Ooh, interesting first mission. It was time to bring Florence back, which meant you needed a possess hard enough to invade Purgatory. The first member of your posse would be Jefferson Burns. As a decorated war hero and Indian fighter, you would likely find him in the nearby military encampment. Of course, you were still a wanted outlaw from your brush with the masked man. Okay. Yeah, Warren starts with shitty weapons. But that's okay. Let's go into the army camp. The camp was nearly deserted, only a couple of sentries remained. Burns was nowhere to be seen as an outlaw approaching openly would guarantee hostile response. Uh, you could take um, the men out one by one, but it would likely yield less information about where Burns was. 
Uh, you snuck into the camp at eavesdrops on the men's uh, conversations. Sneaking past the guards was simple, you saw the sergeant taking with one of his subordinates and managed to eavesdrop on their conversation. It seems Prince was leading an attack to the nearby Indian village. We stole some provisions and snuck out of uh, the camp. That's good. A plume of smoke visible from miles away guided you uh, to the site of the pacification. Uh, the village was in ruins. It was littered with body parts. The army had not even spared the women or children. The place was desecrated, save for a single figure sitting at the rock, his head in his hands. The mangled visage seems uh, to convince Burns that uh, you were the devil uh, incarnate. He said he was ready for his punishment. I explained to him who I was and that I need help with the mission. Burns would never accept another mission. He had dismissed his men and abandoned his command. A treasonous deed he would surely have been hanged for. He said if you wanted help uh, for your mission, you should seek out the tribesmen who has escaped to the holy grounds. They would be hungry for revenge. Unable to convince you to join him, you headed towards the sacred grounds. As you departed, you heard a single gunshot behind you. Burns has joined his victims. He left his pathetic remains without looking back. Well, shit. He might have been a good gunman. Let's see what the Fate Trader has to offer. I can already tell you. With only 120. All of the weapons that I want are not available. So we can cut that short. Let's go to the sacred grounds. You follow the trail of blood and bodies uh, to a giant twisted red leaf tree surrounded by graves. You navigated all the uh, tall grass carefully looking for signs of surviving natives. You inched forwards, gun drawn. Uh, you whisper and foreign tongue behind you uh, gave you the start. You raised your hands and turned slowly behind uh, you the barrel of a precision rifle that was painted as your uh, that was uh, was the painted face of a tribal warrior. He was wounded, but his hands were steady. He gestured uh, to you for leave this place. The only English word he could say was, um, what you were make out were dark demon. You told him that you were the spirit of vengeance, came to grant him the opportunity to set things right. He snorted, gestured again and said, like a demon. After pause, he added another single word, why? He wanted to know why a black demon like you would help a native warrior to get revenge? It was a fair question. You told him you were the spirit of vengeance. Uh, then you pantomimed uh, a story for him. As you relate your tale, he maintained a solemn expression and kept his gun barrel aimed at your head. Still, with each part of the story, you could see glittering and understanding in his eyes, along with a fire of revenge. When you finished, he raised his gun uh, and pointed at you, uh, then at himself and said yes he left the sacred the grounds behind were randy harden a notorious gunfighter and henry persons a former pinkerton agent the local crime lord would know where to find them well he has a proper aim with a fracture that's good he has a wound that's very good we can use that a bit later and he has an elephant rifle which is not the worst thing in the world that's actually quite good there's a tomb over here you arrived at the burial place it was the reputation to belong to one of the four evangelists a gang of four brothers named mark matt luke and john uh, the disfigured uh, the disfigured uh, vagrant sat on the tomb he presented himself as a necator a seer he told you that each of your uh, brother's tomb contained an inscription that told a part of their story somebody read the story in an incorrect order it would reveal the location of the gang's stash in a correct order it would reveal the gang's stash you read the inscription at Matthew's tomb. Mark was the eldest, and the others had always followed his order. But John harbor, harbored a secret bitterness. 
So Mark Ellis, John was bitter when they finally tracked down the masked doctors responsible for the atrocities. He disobeyed his eldest command uh, to provide cover. Without his brother's uh, protection, Matthew was riddled by bullets. They buried him here. Uh, wow. So we had Mark, John, Matt and Luke. Uh, Mark, John, Luke and Matthew. Did I miss something? <sighs> Mark was the eldest and the others had always followed him. John harbored a secret bitterness. When they finally tra uh, tracked down the masked doctor responsible for the atrocities, he, dis he disobeyed his eldest command to provide cover. So that was John. Without his brother's protection, Matthew was riddled by bullets. They buried him here. Mark. John. Matthew. I don't know who Luke was. Luke. Um... No, I'm getting something wrong here. I don't know what's happening with Luke. So it's Mark, John and Matthew. That's kind of the order. Mark is the first one. John harbored the secret bitterness. Track down the mass doctors responsible for the atrocities. His, he disobeyed his elder eldest command to provide cover. There's uh, something. There is something missing. That's tomb uh, of Matthew the e Evangelist. Oh, probably that's only one of the tombs. Okay, got you. Got you, got you, got you. Now we're now we're talking. So it's Mark's tomb. So Mark, the hearse was not carrying the worldly remains of the departed to a distant soil. Instead, it contains living human parts kept alive in jars by electricity and eldritch bombs. Mark was resolute, whoever did this must pay. John and Matt disagreed. For this time, the brothers were dis uh, divided. So if John and uh, Matthew, uh, if John and Matt disagreed, then they were still alive when he was buried. Which means Mark here was number three. The brothers fell into disarray. Mark blamed John, John blamed Mark, and Luke, who had been always broke at their place, was powerless to reconcile them. Temper escalated until John drew on Mark and another brother fell. Got you. This time by the hand of his own kin, it was the end of the evang uh, evangelist. So, um, first Matthew uh, um, died, then the temper escalated and John killed Mark. So it's Matthew first. Um, I think the story here mentioned that he died first. Matthew was riddled by bullets.
Um, interestingly enough, so yeah, Matthew was riddled by bullets, Mark was the eldest and provided all of uh, the guidance and here it says uh, John drew on Mark and Mark was shot. So it's Matthew first, then was Ma uh, then Mark uh, was the second one, which means it leaves only John and uh, this other guy. Luke, yeah, there we go. Let's see what they have to say. John drifted alone, rootless and without purpose. Finally, tired of being outgunned and outnumbered, he decided he could not continue. He was uh, on, preparing to take his own miserable life when Luke returned bent on reconciliation he had found some leads on the mark's doctors and the time to strike was now um John and Matt disagreed. Well, that's Mark's grave. John drew and Mark and another brother fell. So it's pretty sure that Mark is the second one. Now let's uh, go with the story. So we know that Matt fell first, um, then it's Mark. And then let's try the others, try again. So it's Matt fell first, then it's Mark, and then it's the other two. Hmm, maybe the other way around. So it's Mark and Matt. Nope, let's try one last time. It's Mark and Matt. What am I missing? The beginning of the story was actually Matt's story because he died first. Then it was Mark's story and the other two I don't know. Well, that's embarrassing. How would I not know that? Mark, Matt, John, Luke. okay. Well, now it worked. I think I had uh, tried that riddle a couple of times. Apparently, it took a while until it completed. Here's the Evangelist Sesh. Blend unmarked grave, match the directions uh, decrypted from the Evangelist's tombs and inscription. Your long digging efforts was, was rewarded with finding of substantial material value. Well, we got some items, I suppose. One armed bandit. A damage, one shot. Not bad. It's better than a shotgun that we do have. Medical bag. Bulletproof vest. Let's go to the wizard. The party came upon a circus tent set up in, in uh, Congress, uh, by, set up in Congress, the, in the middle of uh, the Badlands. As you neared, you saw it was surrounded uh, by armed men wearing uh, clown makeup. A sign read the dazzling um, house of peculiar and strange. The previous travel told you that this uh, this was uh, Algreto Mystic's gang, the leader. Wizard Algreto had the reputation for making things and people disappear without a trace. A, horse, um, a house offered all sorts of cheap entertainment. You asked to see the wizard. 
at all. Gaunt man introduced himself as Sean Vermelton. He said the wizard was waiting for you and offered you a complimentary drink. A single shot glass filled with a cold yellowish liquid uh, set on the tray. Vermilion looked at you expectantly. After a moment of hesitation, you drowned the glass. Vermilion led you through dark corridors lined up with colorful circle, um, circus posters. Finally, you passed through the flap door into a complete darkness. Vermilion was nowhere to be seen. You were trying to make out what might uh, be in the dark room when, with a heavy thunk of a machinery, a single spotlight appeared. The tall figure stood in it, wearing some sort of cloak. You watched to walk towards the figure, but your legs didn't react. You just stood there watching. Sudden flash of light uh, blinded you, you um, the shock making you fall to the ground. When you opened your eyes, the room was uh, brightly lit by floating orbs of blue light. A short, bald man wearing a long robe and strange eyeglasses stood above you. Sean Vermonton stood behind him. A small man um, presented himself as wither Wizard Al Grato and uh, claimed he had business with you. He told you to nod your head if you uh, wanted a lengthy explanation or shake it if you wanted to cut the chase. You nodded. The wizard smiled at you and made the choice to accept a drink. It meant he didn't have to resort to violence to make you listen to him. He said he knew you, who you were and who you were looking for and that you should give it up now. The wizard considered Harden his property and said that the men were currently detained where they belong. Persons though Oh, of a different matter, Henry Howard Persons used to work in the Pinkerton Special Division, but several years of his service were blank. The wizards assured you Persons was quite insane, but that he found the man fascinating, especially his obsession and search for pieces of a specific meteorite. Apparently, no law of property or human uh, decency could stop him in his quest to acquire these pieces. He was the ultimate collector. Therefore, the wizard continued, uh, if you wanted to make contact with persons, you needed to find pieces of the meteorite and were in luck. And the meteor traveled through the Earth's skies. It left a trail of debris in this very area. All you had to do was obtain some of those pieces. In whatever way you deemed acceptable, four pieces would be enough to attract the strange man's attention and make him emerge from the hiding, the wizard said. With these words, the wizard nodded and went away. On the way out, a queer fellow tapped on his shoulder. He said something about recognizing a fellow connoisseur. Um, then a bit harder, a uh, bit hard into your flesh. You pushed him away and quickly retreated, uh, tipping his head. For the rest of the day, you had a strange aftertaste in your mouth. Well, what a strange little fellow. The Van Quero, this once has been a thriving town, now it is reduced to a single bar. The Van Quero has been run by former Major Marshal Todd Marby. It seems liquor and tobacco were not the only things that sold in the Forsaken Road. You entered the, Bard, um, the Bard's courtyard. This was populated by a seedy mix of farmers, cowboy and lowlifes. In addition to the drinks, um, he also offered to trade. Well, that's good enough. We got some value out of it. Here's a brothel. You arrived at a well-maintained farm composed of several large uh, bungalows with extensive red lightning. Emma Baibai's uh, Debouchure's uh, de establishment was known for its security. The place was guarded by the same woman. Uh, who worked with the clients, only a fool would cross them. Brothel was a large complex. Um, a gaggle of gunslinger hung around in its bar. The kitchen behind the counter led to an open country uh, courtyard, but you were forbidden from going there. Uh, you were allowed in the lobby where the woman watched you with distrust. Emma Bell Bell establishment remained in her office. You returned to the bar. Um, the girl, when the girl face uh, the name, uh, she looks like you hit the jackpot. She pointed out to a building across the farm. Harden was there, she said. 
detained and orders from the wizard himself, which no one else, uh, was no, no one could figure since Harden had been wizard's lieutenant for years. She pulled you close and said to, uh, it was because Harden uh, was, uh, was a diseased husk of a man, no longer fit for any real job. She said if you wanted to see him, you should talk to Madame Bye Bye. Her breath was hot on your neck. She asked whether you wanted anything else. Um, no, actually not. We need to save our money. I'm sorry. You asked to talk to the madam. James Rusk, Emma, bye-bye assistants, led you through the door and followed close behind you. The room was uh, adorned with paper, marge, decorations, uh, and um, decorations and kinda. Uh, in the center of the room, like a dare, stood a massive safe cabinet. You heard someone clear, uh, clear her throat and then turn to see Emma bye-bye, looking at you disapprovingly. You ask her for the prince, Emma uh, bye bye looked at her assistant and the two started giggling then burst out in laughter. You attempted to shut their mouth with a gun, seeking your consideration, uh, bye bye explained. Uh, she only did business with important people. You mentioned your role in the masked man's ultimate death. The Madden said hardly compared to being a trusted ally in the wizard and the leader of a feared, respected organization. You wondered aloud whether she was confusing the word ally with henchman. She looked at you uh, dispassionately uh, as she lit a cigarette in a long slanter. Oh, that's nice. She asked you why you were interested in a worthless son of a motherless goat like Harden. She inquired as to whether you ran a charity. Uh, with lightning swiftness, you pulled the assistant's gun from his holster and shot him in the stomach. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. I wanted to buy uh, weapons prior to that, but that's fine. We don't give a damn. So our sniper needs a couple of extra hit points, that's fine. We just gave him these. And I think... Warren definitely... Oh, we only have three cards un unlocked so far. Well, never mind. I like the Jinx, that's great for small areas. I like the regeneration in passive sunlight, but I also like Shriek. I, but I think we're not going to Shriek many people at the moment. Um, we're just taking a pair here and... I think for the time being we're going to Shriek with him. Good. We got the boons. We got a couple of the weapons. Let's proceed to combat. I would have wanted to buy from the fate trader but uh, we were barely having enough money i like it we resolve uh, we resolve uh, to violence end. immediately despite the odds you still needed to get hard and out of there So I guess what she was saying is that she actually wanted to insult us. So it's one down, that's another one down, okay. Good, we're... can we move in? No, we can't move in without shooting the madam, and that's okay, I mean... Madam has six hit points. We're taking our gun. There we go. Shoot 
3 deals, 3 damage and not 4. That's too bad. But it's okay. We're basically starting in the middle of a uh, in in the middle of a, a bravo fight against all of them perfect moment and apparently all of the hookers do have guns at their disposal Reloading and we're not having any target. That's a bummer. All right, draining his luck. Yeah, I don't want to go into the on, on the other side. We're ending the turn here. These guys will take new positions at the moment. There's only one person who could shoot at us. And that one person just took a very, very bad position. Well, let me correct that. We do have two potential enemies. And both of them took a bad position. Let's start. It seems as one of the characters, by the way, is being uh, is being trapped here. Oh my God, the AI is so bad. So our job in a nutshell is to reach Harden. That's fine. Reload. Gosh, we somewhat need to uh, kill a couple of these guys. We're taking way too much damage here. Down to hit uh, two hit points. And somehow he's taking the brunt of all of the damage. Eating uh, some healing over time. 
Because I, want, uh, I don't want to lose the extra damage. Are we having some sort of a crippling uh, wound? Because he's losing hit points per round. It's very unnormal. boy we do have a lot of enemies coming at us here So, I'm a bit worried because he's still having like this gushing wound here. So, we probably need to get to a corpse relatively soon. But relatively soon, I mean like within the next round. So that would be one option on the sniper. That would be five damage. Yeah, let's take that shot. There we go. One more down. He's stopped bleeding at least for now. That's a good sign. It's fine. This guy could be in full cover. For all I care, that's okay. We do have a corpse back here. I think we can use. The problem is the door still is open. Yeah. Let's make sure we're being absolutely safe. I don't want to be shot with three hit points. That would be unfortunate. down to three hit points and there we go he's almost dead Okay, 
That's one more down. There is no line of sight here. So might as well position ourselves over here. That might be a bad idea because there are actually two enemies. So we're moving back out. Stand on a tile with a dead character, eating resource, three hit points, and improving stats. Well, that is a dead character. Apparently, the game doesn't allow us to do it, so we're moving back. go nice little shot got him down to two hit points oh. we're down to two ourselves I think that's quite fitting reload and let's kill this guy slowly but surely we're killing all of them stand on the tile with a dead character like how much more can I stand on a tile with a dead character? Seriously. Hmm. Moving over here. I am wondering because technically we should be able to cannibalize never done that so far but like all of these fields here are covered with dead characters Something is severely wrong. I don't know what. So we know he's up there. And there's only a very limited amount of defense. I saw one. Moving further. Interesting. It 
see that we're basically being flanked from there. Moving into cover. Moving further into cover. Moving over here. That was unfortunate. Now moving into full cover, but that's okay. We're moving into full cover as well and flanking her. Apparently even the barmaid was well armed in this establishment. This is most likely going to trigger, but she can't kill me with one shot. I, I'm doing this because I'm genuinely interested if it doesn't pop up as a red circle, if that means that you can go closer. Harden's guard was strong you can. and imposing. You couldn't release Harden with her around. Free from his binds, Harden thanked you and cursed those who betrayed him. Of course, he had no idea why you freed him in the first place. But it was time to leave. Nice! That was a great shootout. It's probably a good time to end the mission here. We're going to see each other in the next video. If you liked what you've seen, give it a thumbs up and leave a nice little comment down below. We're on the finishing line of the last chapter of Hard West. And I'm enjoying every little bit of it. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.